There you go. I'm going to slouch a little. <laughs> Okay. Welcome, oh. everyone, to the weekly women GMO free news show. My name is Zen Honeycutt, and I'm here from Southern California. I'm the founder of Moms Across America. My co founder, Kathleen Halal Wave, is here with me, the blonde lady in the middle there. There you go. And we have our host today also is Andy Frostat from Washington. Give us a wave, Andy. And also Liz, uh, Lori Olson from Washington. And our very special guest is Howard Vliger from Iowa, our farmer, our favorite farmer in the world. <laughs> Howard has um, just been a huge supporter, and, and he's just been a huge supporter of getting GMOs labeled and awareness and farming without GMOs and chemicals. So, Howard, we are very happy to have you on our weekly Women GMO Free News Show. We are, really we are really committed that everyone is empowered to find out about GMOs, to get them labeled, and to have GMO-free solutions. And we're here to talk about a lot of news. This is a historic week. In fact, Henry Rollins from Sustainable News said this is the worst week ever for Monsanto science. And um, you know we don't want to be happy about that, but we are happy that people are finding out about the harm that is coming to our planet and our people in our nation and all around the world from GMOs and the chemicals related to them. And we're going to talk about some, some groundbreaking news today. And the first one is, we're just going to mention all three of them and then we're going to go in depth with Howard in an interview with him about the pig study. So the first one that launched on Tuesday was the pig study. What are you officially calling that, Howard? Uh. I guess it's a lifelong toxicology study on the effects of GMOs being fed to hogs. GMO, okay. GMO grain. And that was done by Dr. Carmen, is that? Dr. Hmm. Carmen was the lead scientist on the project. Um, I, I was the primary coordinator of the project in this country, and there were several other individuals who were very helpful in. in accomplishing the study because it was no simple task by any means. Thank you so much for the contribution. We're going to get into the details of this pig study in just a minute. We also want to mention the, um, the huge study that was done in Europe. The glyphosate is being found in 18 different countries in the urine of human beings that are not farmers that are not spraying glyphosate on fields. They're just normal people like you and me and uh, levels of glyphosate are being found in their urine and this is proof that we are being poisoned by these chemicals and we know that it's in the United States because they actually use way more glyphosate here. How much more glyphosate and Roundup do you think is sprayed here than in, in Europe, Howard? Would you have a guess on that? No, I wouldn't. I I, they quit keeping the statistics on our country back in 2007, so it's kind of hard to track it. Yeah, well, back in 2007, I think it was like 179 million pounds were being sprayed. Wasn't it something like that? I would have to go back to the files to look that. You know, I, I wouldn't guess at that. Uh, okay. Right off the top of my head. But the rate well, the GMO today... The GMO OMG movie said, I think Kathleen, you and I saw it, it was five billion pounds have been, yeah, pounds have been um, sprayed, poured, dumped, whatever, yeah, on our food um, over over our historic time of just the past, I don't know, 15 years or so since it's been used. So they're just, it's the most widely used chemical on the planet, on um, our food, especially our parks. We know that the uh, glyphosate is the most widely used herbicide in the world, chemical yep. ingredient. And the thing that I guess too few people realize is how much of it is used today as a pre-harvest application in many, many crops that go directly into the food supply. And uh, sugarcane is the latest one to be on the mm -hmm. rise of significant victims. The, the sugarcane plantations have been instructed by the industry that this is a really good thing that they should spray their sugarcane crop with uh, glyphosate-based herbicides prior to harvest. 
Dr. Huber was just at a, one of the largest plantations, family-owned plantations in the world, and they were experiencing severe uh, nutrient deficiency problems in their crops. The glyphosate doesn't actually kill the crop, it just burns it down prior to harvest. And they were having dramatic yield reductions in the same year that this was applied, as well as subsequent years, the residual effects of the glyphosate was very prevalent in the soil and, and causing uh, major nutrient tie-ups. And this is happening on small grain crops in all parts of the world. They're using it as a pre-harvest ripening agent in all of the foreign countries, as well as in this country. And, and they're even using it on crops that are going such as peas that are going directly into the food supply. This is something. Peas. Yes. yes uh. Production. Uh, this is something that has to have attention brought to it. And with the knowledge that we have, and and with the paper that was just, we just received a copy of this morning. I received a copy on the paper that documented the fact that now they have proven that uh, glyphosate causes breast cancer at yes. part per trillion level. We were at what part? A part per trillion with a T. Um, we knew there was significant damage from it in the minuscule part per million concentrations, but the study actually documents that it promotes the growth of breast cancer in the part per trillion range. Well, yeah, that was the that was the third article that I wanted to bring up. So there was the pig study, the urine and glyphosate study, and then the breast cancer um, report that it causes breast cancer. And I, I have one question. One question about that. Will the EPA pay attention to that study, Howard? Because they're currently looking to increase the acceptable levels of glyphosate in our environment. Will the EPA listen to that breast cancer study? That's a good question. Um, July 1st is the cutoff date for when they will are officially going to take comments on the announced increases that they made the 1st of May on the tolerance and allowance level on glyphosate residue on some uh, crops that go into the food chain. They have raised the limits to as much as 40 parts per million. And we know that it takes less than a tenth of a part per million to cause damage to beneficial organisms in the digestive tract of animals. It's been documented. We also know that those same beneficial organisms are uh, located in our digestive system. And without them, we are not healthy. Uh, it has not been tested per se on humans yet because it's only been animal studies, but I think they're going to have a fine, hard time finding volunteers to ingest the glyphosate to document the damage to the uh, microflora in the digestive tract of people. We have no reason to believe that it won't have the same adverse effect in humans as it does in the various animals that it has been tested in. That um, the, the, the breast cancer that's something that the Susan G. Coleman, you think they would be interested in, in knowing this latest study, and then also the July 1st being the deadline or the comment period on increasing those glyphosate um, residue levels. So we'll have to make sure they have that information. Yes, and if you look up um, the, the levels on the actual study, it is, it is atrocious. You know, we know that um, 0 0.10 causes organ damage in animals and the amount of glyphosate that's let allowed on berries is one parts per million and on sweet potatoes and regular potatoes it's like three to five parts per million it's and this is it's just allowed on all kinds of berries and and fruits and, and some of them they don't even have regulate they don't even regulate so it's an extraordinary amount of toxins that we are all ingesting without being notified on a daily basis if anybody eats anything that's not organic. Well, and with the, the broad spectrum and the, and the wide documentation of the presence of the glyphosate, you really have to question if it's ubiquitous. 
in all types of production. I don't know, know that that's been investigated. Um, we know that the U.S. Geological Service documented the presence of it in the air and the rain and the rivers, yeah. both in 2010 and 2011 in Iowa and Mississippi. That was the only two places they put before. Well, the air and the rain pretty well covers all of the soil regardless of how it's farmed. So it's a very concerning matter. Well, I have a report from Cal I called my California Water Department and they told me two counties in California that had levels of 0.25 parts per million recorded okay. in the water. And I haven't uh, been able to find a copy of the actual study from Europe, but the study that was done in Germany, they sampled the urine of uh, people that were would not come in contact with it. They were uh, city workers, they were bankers, accountants, professional type people, and all of them had higher levels of glyphosate residue in their urine than was legally tolerable in the drinking water. And the solution is just to raise the allowable levels in the drinking water, right? Yeah. That's not funny. You know, in Europe, and that's the, that's what's so horrifying about what Howard is saying. It's horrific because in Europe they, they use far less glyphosate than they do in the U.S. We just know that because they're not raising the, the the GM crops on the scale that we are here. So we have all the basic uses that Howard's talking about for regular farming, conventional farming, but also in addition to what Europe is exposed to, we have all that GM farming, so our numbers must be through the roof. Yeah, wow. we, we have 80, 80 to 90 percent of our crops are GMO, and for the people who don't know, that means they're being directly sprayed with Roundup and glyphosate on our food, and it does not wash off, and 70 percent of it may go through our urine, but 30 percent has been documented to stay in our bone marrow and draw out the vital nutrients of in any living thing. And that means it draws out calcium, manganese, magnesium, iron, zinc, all of the important vital uh, minerals that we need to fight cancer, that we need to stay healthy, that we need to not be sick. And, you know, I was 38 when I found out I had borderline osteoporosis. I'm not the only one. My doctor, I told her about this, about glyphosate and it drawing out the vital nutrients, a holistic doctor, and she said that's why I'm seeing a huge rise in people in their 30s with osteoporosis. I mean, this is this is what's happening. It's destroying our bones and our immune systems. It's destroying our, our reproductive organs in our system. We currently have the lowest birth rate in recorded history in the United States. There are there is an actual impact now, and I want to know. I mean, we all want to know when is this going to stop, and when is our federal government going to protect us? And they're you know, not. So that, I'm afraid they're not. It's us, Zen. It's right. us. Yes, I know it's us. I know it's us. And the federal government mean, needs to step up and, and close this operation down because this is it's atrocious. It's an attack on our human race. Yeah. So those are the three major studies. And um, we're going to get back to the pig study in depth. But before we do that, I do want to touch upon each one of our hosts, the, the news that's happening, because there's a lot of bad news out there, but like you said, Kathleen, we're the good news. We are causing a lot of uh, awareness, of involvement. I mean, there are huge things happening, all because of the people, all free, all because we love our kids, we love our health, we love our freedom, and we're making it happen. So I want to hear from um, Andy in Washington with a ballot initiative that we know is going to win. And Andy, please tell us about your yes on I-522 to label, genetic, 522 yeah. to label yeah. genetically modified food. Um, first, I want to congratulate Connecticut and Maine now. Yay. Two states passing yeah. labeling. So that is fantastic. Um, and Washington State, we are well underway on our campaign. And I wanted to show this public disclosure because now the money wars start. And here's the public disclosure statement of who's donating to um, 522. And we have the Grocery Manufacturers Association, on no on 522. The Grocery Manufacturers Association is 500,000, basically, I'm rounding up. 
Monsanto is 242,000, DuPont 172,000, Bayer almost well 30,000, Dow 30,000. You know, know what? You know that's only the cash value. We heard from someone this week, Zen and I did, who said that that's only what you're seeing. They're also all the money they give to PR firms and these firms that they hire for people to do things behind the scenes. That's like a lot more money. This, what shows up in the front is the tip of the iceberg. Like in California, that 46 or 49 million or whatever it is they put in, that was the tip of the iceberg. They can pay these PR firms as much as they want and it just goes under the radar. There's no record. So that's only part of what they're putting in. They should be ashamed. That's good wow. to know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just wanted to show that that's already pumping in. So um, anybody who's listening and can donate, go on to Yes on 522. We're going to need that. We need to, you know, really target the media. We need to get, you know, our word out there. Go out. Um, just go to 522. You can see all the different ways that you can volunteer. How much do you want to raise? <laughs> Me? I think we should raise a minimum, a minimum of $10 million. Right. A minimum. Yeah. Yes. So right now, I think we're almost at two, like 1.6 maybe. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Bronner, and all those others who have, uh, you know, donated to the cause. And thank you, everybody and, and, who will. Yeah. And you need volunteers, though. Volunteer work is giant. If if you don't well, have enough money, you the get out there. Movement. Get out there. Help. Yeah. The grassroots movement is is what's going to get this passed. So, you know, those who helped get this on the initiative, we need them still to get this actually passed. And, and if you can, go ahead, Lori. Okay, so what we have going on is um, we're using Facebook, and um, we'll, we'll get other options up. But right now, Facebook is just a really good way to connect with people. And so um, what I've done in, in my area is I've mirrored what Seattle has done. And we just have volunteers for I-522. And then you just, and it's in groups, so you can make sure that, you know, their trolls don't come in and, and you know, raise havoc. So um, it's just a great idea to have it area by area. So I've got Kitsap, and there's a Seattle one, and just, this is the grassroots movement. So we just need to get that going. I know Cowlitz um, County is doing a great job, and we're just going to be, Having a place where people from all these different efforts, the March Against Monsanto and the, um, the sustainable movement part, you know, just a place where people who are interested in some part of the food movement can come and say, hey, our group is doing this. If you want to get involved, this is your opportunity. And you just have to use the grocery cart method. There's going to be people who don't want to march against anything. And, there, and so the Moms Across America March is perfect for them. You know, they can be for something. We are for labeling. So it's just a great way to have that group of people, and we can just change with the events. We can work, work our way through this. Mm -hmm. And when I-522 is gone, you know, what, whatever the outcome, We'll still be a group of people who know about this, who need to educate our neighbors, because there's plenty of people now. I've talked to so many of them. There are plenty of people who still don't even know that there is such thing, such a thing as genetically modified food. There's yeah. plenty of people like that, and it's crazy because they're eating it every single day, probably three meals a day. Yeah. So that's yes. all I'm gonna say. Plus snacks. Well, thank you for what you're doing, Lori. I know you have, what, is it 12 or 14 parades listed in Washington? <laughs> well, we've got 15. I'm working on 15 parades. Wow, so, um, fantastic. Well, getting them up there and getting people going, it's, but I've got some great leaders, uh, Andy is, and um, Andy is working with the people in Idaho, so it's kind of, um, you know, straddling two states, but it, it's working great. So she's connected now to the movement over there, and We've got um, Kelsey Higginbottom down in, in um, she's in Longview, mm -hmm. and then um, Jeannie B. Green is in the Tumwater area, and those are going to be fantastic parades. Um, Kelsey's got, they've got a float, so that's Great. pretty cool. Yeah. Very exciting. Awesome. I can't wait to see pictures of all the creative ideas that everybody comes up with for their parades. Yeah. You just made me think of something. I just thought of... Um, you know, when I lived up there, those states really are so close together. You could probably 
whole volunteers or people to support you from Oregon or, or British Columbia, Vancouver just passed some anti-GMO legislation. So you could get people from Vancouver, you could get Oregon people, Idaho people, use your neighbors. This affects everybody. Yeah, that's what you they're going to be I'm, doing in Connecticut as well. They're going to be supporting Massachusetts and New York and New Jersey. We're all going to be working together on this, which is a really fantastic part about this whole movement. You know, this whole GMO debacle, this whole mess, is actually bringing together a nation and strengthening a nation. And we are doing it by reaching out and connecting with people we never normally would have known before. And, you know, really having new best friends in our lives that we're going to cherish forever because we work together to create an empowering um, a empowering food supply and empower, you know, health and freedom for all of us. So it's really the most beautiful thing about this whole movement and that what keeps me going, you know, and all of you going, I'm sure, is all the fantastic people. So um, exactly. Kathleen Halal, to speak of, you know, my new best friend in this whole movement, I couldn't do it without her, co-founder for Moms Across America. She's, I, I want her to talk about some of the exciting things that we've been doing in the past couple of weeks, especially the, the movies that we've been going to. Right. That's right. Okay, well, the first big thing was uh, we had a preview of the new movie GMO OMG that's coming out uh, nationwide this summer. But we had a preview in Laguna Beach. Nature's Path gave us one night to show this movie to raise funds for Moms Across America. So we showed this movie in the movie theater at Laguna Beach. And uh, we had over 200 people come. And it was such a great crowd. And Zen and I made some good contacts. You know, uh, the, my director of food services for my school district came with her nutritionist, and she brought other people from the office. Um, there was a superintendent of some district, wasn't there? Like, was it San Juan Capistrano? There was a school superintendent there. Uh, and yes, we had, Monica's. Yeah, and someone came up to us about uh, Zen speaking at a TED Talk coming up at Segerstrom's uh, Performing Arts Center in Costa Mesa. And then I spoke with the man who wanted us to come speak about uh, to the League of Women Voters. So we made really good contacts, and it was just a great movie anyway, though. I mean, it, when that movie comes out, definitely see it, because it's just the, the, the guy, Jeremy, who made the film with his family, driving around the country and meeting with farmers and exploring GMOs, what they are, where they are, and just explaining it, like, on a very basic level, but really going into detail on, on all the key issues, you know, especially the use of chemicals and what's affecting our environment and our children. Uh, it was just brilliant, and then uh, so that that's a really good film to look out for. And Nature's that Path was, brought snow, and so on. So it was well, great. That was well received. That movie, extremely. I mean, okay. it's such an easy and fun movie to watch. It's like funny. It's kind of funny, didn't you think, Sen? It's like yeah, he has such a good sense. They call it the feel-good GMO movie. Yeah, and so it's it was really it's, it's, it's really going to be a part of causing the tipping point because it's not as um, scary as genetic roulette. I mean, yeah. you know, you have, the first time you watch that, it's the genetic roulette is very impactful. I, I still, you know, I'm, we're recommending it all the time. But um, the GMO OMG movie is a little bit more. It's just about a story and with a guy with some kids and each traveling around and asking questions. So it's, but it also gets the point across and really it describes the impact of what's happening. So. It's it's excellent, and I think I really do believe it'll go mainstream, and be, it will be in main theaters. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the good it's things so that Starter launched. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then we watched Unacceptable Levels as well. You want to mention that, Kathleen? Yeah, we saw the preview of the premiere up in Hollywood of the movie Unacceptable Levels, and that's a movie that's been created by Ed Brown, and uh, he was there. Uh, Gary Hirschfield was there. Jeffrey Smith was there. Dr. Bronner was there, like everybody was there, all these people that are involved in the GMO movement. And that movie was really good because it showed the chemical exposure that, that, that our children and our families are, are suffering from uh, in general, in, in everything. They talked about, uh, you know, sludge, like waste from these sewage plants when they kind of boil down the water and the junk they're left with that they filter out, they dry it out. They chop it up and they put it on the fields, on the farms. And, you know, they talked about fluoride in our water, how really it's a poison, and they put it in our water and it's a good way for them to get rid of it. And they actually profit by selling something to our water companies that they should be paying money for to get rid of. And then they talked about all of our body products like lotions and 
shampoos and makeup and things we don't think about how that industry is basically unregulated and they don't even have to put all the ingredients on the product so that's another source of chemicals and then naturally of course one big segment was on GMOs on Roundup and, and glyphosate and how it's everywhere in our environment but I just wanted to really thank NYR Organics because they invited us and they are sponsoring Moms Cross America and this is not just a sales pitch I wouldn't tell you about this stuff if I didn't think it was great but this is a little gift box they gave and I got one for Zen too she had to leave early she was celebrating her anniversary with her husband but um, they gave us these products and they come in these beautiful bottles and they're organic and they smell so good I am I, I am so thrilled about this new you know solution that we have you know after watching that movie where I was like oh my gosh what am I going to use around my house and then they gave us a little gift I thought oh I know <laughs> you know they just so I recommend that you check this out online, NYR, NYR Organics, and you'll be hearing more about these products from us later when we get to know them, but this was just an introduction for Zen and I, and we were thrilled. We were thrilled. They're, they're just, they're beautifully packaged, and they smell great, and they're safe. They're safe for us. That's the main thing, that they're good products, beautiful products, and they're safe. So we just need to pay attention to our whole environment, what's going on in our whole environment, and that's what that movie was about. That movie will... The, the release will be difficult. I was asking about it. It's going to go first kind of through universities. It's going to do university circuit. And then it will probably be kind of in art houses. But the movie is called Unacceptable Levels. And you can Google the trailer online. And uh, definitely we're seeking out. So those two movies, GMO, OMG, and then Unacceptable Levels. They're, they're really important films, especially for moms and parents, but for everyone to, to learn about what's in our environment and, and things we can do to protect ourselves. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, and I also want to mention that if, um, uh, let's see, I've got some news, and that is that Global GMO Movie Night uh, tomorrow, all day, Genetic Roulette, oh, sorry, I don't have my copy of my movie, but Genetic Roulette will be free all day and the link is on the Facebook event page on uh, Moms Across America. You just click on events, you can see the globe and Global GMO Movie it's Night. Backwards. There you go, Kathleen's got it. Put it up close, Kathleen, it's to the camera. It's backwards though, huh? It's yeah. backwards, guys. Oh, okay. No, Genetic we can see it. We can see it. Like Genetic Good. roulette. Okay. It looks like a little gambling, you know, a, a whatever you call that. A roulette wheel. Roulette. Yep. Roulette. Yeah. And it's free all day. You just click on the link, and the idea is to have ten friends over, and if they share with five, and they share with five, and they share with five, then you'll be responsible for 1,270 people finding out about GMOs in a single weekend. And we are, in, in, we are committed to empowering millions of people this weekend to find out about GMOs, and we have 788 events happening around the world. Woo! So, uh, really very exciting all around the world. This is in partnership with March Against Monsanto and GMO Free USA and Sustainable Pulse and, you know, label GMOs. Everybody's helping to get the word out. So, we're really working together on this one. Um, also, June 16th, the very next day, Sunday, is the last day to buy your T-shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And a GMO, we're not buying it, right? And we also have label GMOs. Um, because we said now, label GMOs now because we said so. We have um, GMO free kid, GMO free mom. We have an apron that says GMO free chef. It's really cute. And uh, June 16th is the last day. There will be no late orders. And you will get your t shirt from your parade leader. They're only $12. They're organic. And, um, and they're for you to resell if you would like to and raise some money to pay for, help pay for your parade, parade pack. And your parade pack you'll be able to order until June 20. Fifth, I believe, and it's going to be about $120 plus shipping will come out to about $150, and um, there were some fees and stuff I'd forgotten in there, so it's not $98, it's $128, and, I mean $120 plus shipping, and it, you will get one banner, a thousand flyers, 300 buttons, which you can resell and pay yourself back for the entire parade pack for two. You sell them for two to a dollar for a dollar. And 500 stickers, which we can give to kids, and the stickers are little apples that say, save mom's apple pie, say no to GMOs, so the kids will get something too, and you have an option to buy window decals as well for your cars. Um, so that's happening June 16th, I mean June 16th t-shirts, June 25th buy your parade packs, and um, just some other local news, um, got onto the front page of the newspaper. Yeah, so 
very excited about this. This was for asking my school to go GMO f free and also Kathleen Halal in Irvine um, approached her school district and Monica Serratos in uh, Capistrano district so it's really about three OC moms who are taking on the food system and it was very exciting. Of course the article was completely skewed and biased and I've sent you know a couple letters to the editor they used us pretty much to promote GMOs, which we thought might happen. <laughs> but at least we're raising the issue, and you know I'm putting out there the corrections that need to be put out. Um, we'll see if it happens or not. But 